So in the wake of seeing The Matrix in theaters again for its 20th anniversary re-release, and realizing just how well that movie still holds up to this day, I just had to get my sci-fi fix by getting my hands on a modern science fiction film. I had heard very high praise about this Robert Pattinson film called High Life, so I finally decided to give that movie a shot. And after watching it, I can firmly say, I wish I made a video on The Matrix instead. Produced by A24, obviously, High Life is a different kind of science fiction film, at least in comparison to something like The Matrix. It is a slow burn kind of film that features very weighty themes, and acts as more of a drama that just happens to include some sci-fi elements. A group of criminals serving death sentences are sent on a mission to space to find and extract alternative energy from a black hole. This mission is damned, however, and the people on board now struggle to survive as they hurtle toward oblivion. Now on paper, that might sound like a fun and adventurous story, yet High Life is anything but. And that's fine, not all science fiction films need to include action and adventure. You should just know what you're getting into when you watch this movie. But you're a smart person, you see A24 and Robert Pattinson, and you know you're gonna get a small and intimate indie drama. And that's exactly what this is. High Life is a movie that focuses on human life. It asks a ton of bold questions about the human condition. We see prisoners who committed heinous crimes now vying for their life. Some grow mad with their isolation, as others find solace in parenthood. This is a movie that focuses heavily on paternity after all, and more generally, despite our technological advancements, I mean we literally watch people try to harness energy from a black hole, we are still primitive beings that operate on primal instincts. That's why these prisoners have a device called the fuckbox that allows them to pleasure themselves in order to relieve some of their primal urges. Seeing as how the prisoners aren't allowed to have sex with each other, this device is used obsessively. The thing is, I don't want to watch a bunch of criminals masturbate. It's gross and uncomfortable. Yet this movie spends a lot of time focusing on sex. I get that life and the creation of life is a central theme in this movie, and that the point of certain scenes is probably to make us feel as gross and uncomfortable as some of these prisoners do, but I kinda don't want to relate to a bunch of murderers and rapists and whatever else have you. Yes, they're still human and they have a right to their basic human needs, but still, get out of here with your fuckbox. So I guess Robert Pattinson's character Monty is the protagonist of this story, but the only thing that really makes his character relatable is the fact that he has a daughter. He has to actively care for another being, and we're supposed to empathize with him because of that, even though he's like a weird celibate or something. That's right, he's a celibate, and he has a daughter. Think about how that might have happened just for a second. Everyone has been raving about Pattinson's performance, but he was fine, I guess. He was actually rather cold and distant if you ask me. Like that's probably what the material asked of him though, so like I said, he was fine. But Robert Pattinson is always just fine. I've never really seen him do anything exceptional. So if people were pointing to his performance here to switch your perception of him playing the Batman, I don't think you're going to be won over, because I personally still don't see it. The rest of the cast is also fine. Andre 3000 is in this movie for some reason, and so is Juliette Binoche who I only remember seeing in the opening scene of Godzilla 2014. Of course, she's been in more established movies made by auteur or French directors, and that's probably why she teamed up with Claire Denny for this movie. Now, I've never seen anything by Claire Denny before, even though I'm sure she has an established name for herself, but with her involvement, I understand why this film is dark and dreary and heavy and weighty. That's just her style of filmmaking. However, I just personally found that her style made for a boring story that felt rather dull and overly long. This movie is an hour and 50 minutes long, but the pacing drags so much that the entire film feels longer than necessary. I mean, I don't know what was or wasn't necessary for this specific story, but there's a scene where Monty and his daughter find a spacecraft filled with dogs, and guess what? 
They're all eating each other to survive. Well, I wonder what that might be a metaphor of. That doesn't seem too terribly on the nose, does it? Well, yeah, it, it does. I mean, I don't know. A lot of people have been praising this movie as one of the best science fiction films of the past few years, but I just don't see it. The film is too dark and drab and unnecessarily long and on the nose and gross for my personal taste. Eh. I guess it's just a typical A24 drama that just happens to be set in space. The only sci-fi visual that sticks in my head is a scene where someone gets spaghettified. That was pretty disturbing. But other than that, the movie just wasn't for me, and I would probably give High Life 1 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching.